My name is Markiplier, and No Coke is my favorite channel on YouTube. Subscribe. Kickboxing and Muay Thai is a sport that has struggled to reclaim the popularity it once had in the late 90s and early 2000s. Some may not know that before the rise of Conor McGregor in the UFC, <laughs> the sport of MMA and kickboxing practically stood on equal footing. Between the heavyweight tournaments of K1 featuring the ominous Badahari to the kickboxing superstars of Bacau and Masato, the sport has largely faded from the public eye leaving only a few striking enthusiasts in its place. And although the sport of kickboxing can still be considered large in places like Japan, large enough for kickboxing star Tension to secure a fight with Floyd Mayweather, Western audiences most likely feel like the sport is too dense to get into. I felt the same way until I checked out a promotion that most would call that promotion that Demetrius Johnson got traded to, and decided to watch a rerun of an event simply named 1X that included Demetrius in the card, but one fighter totally caught my attention more so than any other. I really like guys. There's just something about them. I like their touch. This is Nongo, one of the greatest Muay Thai practitioners in one championship and possibly all of Muay Thai. No! Oh, Like many in Thailand, Nongo was born in poverty. He rarely saw his own parents, as they moved away from his small province to Bangkok, as a way to attain work that would enable them to pay for him and his two sisters' education and lifestyle. Living with his grandparents, Nongo was brought into Muay Thai when he was caught watching his neighbour hit the heavy bag. When invited to train, Nongo obliged, and at the age of nine, was already having his first fight after a month of training. At first, I didn't like boxing. However, I made money from it that helped to improve my financial status, and I kept doing it. The usual pay for a win at his young age was said to be 100 baht, which roughly translates to about $3 in cash. Following a few more fights and eventually gaining his family support, Nongo would eventually travel to Bangkok in his teenage years to pursue a fighting career full-time. Whilst training at Bangkok, Nongo eventually got a chance to compete at the prestigious Rajadamurn Stadium, where some of the greatest Thai fighters in the world compete to see who's the best. I was nervous for my first fight. After I won, I was really happy because it was a big deal to fight and win in Bangkok. After his debut at Rajadamurn Stadium, the equally prestigious, if not more so, Lumpany Stadium approached him for a few fights, which he happily took. Following an impressive winning streak, he eventually fought for the Super Bantamweight Lumpany title and won it by decision, an incredible feat for any Muay Thai fighter. Shortly after this, he won the Lumpany Junior Featherweight title, and all seemed to be going well until he eventually ran into a reoccurring pain in the backside for him, Senchai. Famously recognized as one of the Muay Thai goats, Senchai was a fighter that Nongo was never able to fully figure out in five fights against him, despite Nongo's supreme fight IQ. Senchai has been responsible for breaking many of Nongo's winning streaks and kicking off many of his losing streaks, one streak being especially intrusive in Nongo's mind. Starting off with a loss to the aforementioned Senchai, Nongo's incredible career and long list of accolades seemed to temporarily halt, as he would lose all of six fights spanning over a seven-month time period. I was building a house for my family during that time, 
and relied on the money from fighting as our main source of income. Looking back, I was thinking too much. I felt the pressure to make money to build a house and support my family. All the thinking affected my performance, I think. Although he later went on to state he never thought of quitting, it was evident and admitted that at the time, he lost a lot of confidence in himself and his own abilities. But having championship resolve and a true passion for the sport, it wasn't long before Nongo was back on his regular path of competing in world-renowned stadiums against the best competition in the world. After a career many would be proud of, winning multiple titles at the most competitive Muay Thai stadiums in the world, Nongo would supposedly fight for the last time in 2015 when losing a bout against Shamaktun Soyupinda in Raja Damun Stadium by points. Retiring at 28, Nongo would relocate from Bangkok to Singapore and begin a coaching role at the famous gym Evolve MMA, where he would remain for three years and was said to have been loved by his students. But this didn't last long. When the promotion intrinsically tied to Evolve MMA announced a super series to showcase the greatest kickboxers in the world, Nongo jumped at the opportunity. That promotion was one championship. And changes stances oh! and lands! Nongo's first fight back to the ring was against Fabio Pinka, who he handedly beat to a decision. The funny thing about this win is that Fabio is one of the few foreigners to actually defeat Senshai, the person who gave Nongo so much trouble many years back. So if you saw this as some sort of moral victory, I would be inclined to agree. Following another win, Nongo went on to attain the Muay Thai Bantamweight belt in one championship, which can be argued to be the most stacked division in the most stacked striking promotion in the world. Since then, he has defended his title a record six times, with his last four fights ending in spectacular finishes. An analogy I've always liked to use when talking about Nongo's style is a very basic toolkit given to a genius inventor. To elaborate, Nongo's Muay Thai style is incredibly fundamental. He doesn't stray too far into unorthodox territory with crazy kicks or strange defensive techniques. Although adding these facets to his game could arguably help, they're simply unnecessary, as Nongo's most powerful tool is his mind and eye for fighting. His right kick is incredibly powerful, and he often feints this kick by simply bending his knees and pivoting his foot very slightly. He's good at drawing out defensive responses from his opponents, and as they retract those responses, Nongo then capitalizes on the open hole in their defense. His sweeps are also fantastic. My personal favorite was against Fabio Pinka, where he threatened a teep kick before taking out his legs as he checked, throwing him directly onto the floor as a result. He also feints the teep to land stiff jabs on occasion, as seen in the Rodleck fight. In his early career, Nongo's counters were primarily seen as catch counters, where he would take kicks or punches off the guard and more often than not, backstep and fire his own rear kick in response. More recently, however, he's shown impressive boxing counters with fadebacks and the ability to slip and return with his own offense. Nongo's defensive system is something I like to summarize using four layers. The first layer is distance management. Nongo likes to take slow back steps, teep the leg, and generally just keep his opponent away before entering the pocket on his own terms or continuing to pick away at them from a distance. Because he's always managing distance, he also manages to catch a lot of fighters coming in to close the range. The Rodleck fight is a huge example of this. His second layer is parries, usually seen with jabs. In the Lobo fight, he parried and returned jabs quite often. He also more recently likes to shell, as a lot of the fighters in one championship come from non-Thai backgrounds and attack in combinations which can be notoriously difficult to parry. This high god usually comes in a forearm block whilst backpedaling to take the power out of the shots. He uses the forearm primarily because Muay Thai in one championship uses four ounce gloves, typically seen in MMA, so many more shots can slip through when boxing with these gloves. As I've said, many of his hand combinations are pretty fundamental, and a favourite combo of his usually consists of closing the range while landing a 1-2, then digging his right elbow around the guard of the pressured opponent. He's very good at this. Okay, I'll end it without going into too much detail. That's a pretty basic synopsis of his fighting style. My favourite finish from Nongo has to be his slip uppercut counter that he landed on Lobo. 
In this clip, you can see a few seconds before his KO, Lobo was having some success with the jab, and I think it was Dan Hardy who mentioned that at times it seemed like Nongo was intentionally allowing himself to take a stiff jab or two to lure the opponent into a false sense of security, which I agree with. Suddenly, Nongo slips on the outside of the jab that had been working so well for Lobo in the round, and fires his right uppercut before Lobo is able to get his arm retracted for defense, resulting in a devastating knockout. My personal favorite Nongo fight is probably the Felipe Lobo fight, so I would definitely recommend that for modern Nongo. If you're looking for an older Lumpany Stadium type of fight, I would recommend Nongo vs Kiapech, 25th November 2014. It's a great war and ends in a nice finish. This was kind of a passion project for me, as I really like Nongo and feel like he should be up there with some of the greats in combat sport history. Hopefully with this video he can get the attention he so rightly deserves, and a lot more fans can be interested in Muay Thai as a whole. I'm gonna go play some Dark Souls. Okay, bye.